Coming up on this episode of Murky Seb's Wild Underwater Adventures. On this adventure, I am heading to Gladstone and the surrounding areas because there is something very unique about this particular expanse of land, which I will get into later. But for now, let's get to the start of the journey. It was not a good start, however. We ended up taking a pointless four and a half hour detour before finally getting on the right track. And by the time we left Brisbane, it was already starting to get dark. The only positive thing was seeing these little birds in their nest under a bridge. Their parents thankfully came right back after I left and I kept quite far away from them, filming them with my tiny camera on a very long pole. About a third of the way into what would be an 11 hour drive, we stopped at a random toilet along the highway and I was greeted by the sound of these amazing green tree frogs. And they were everywhere. I was really happy to see all these little frogs. These frogs love to live near public toilets because there's usually a light that attracts insects which make up the majority of their diet. And there's always a source of water there which is vital for these beautiful little frogs to keep their skin damp. It wasn't just frogs that liked the public toilets, but also these awesome little birds called the welcome swallow or Australian swallow, which make their nests out of mud and love to eat insects. They were a common and very welcome occurrence on this trip. And after a terribly long car journey, we got to the campground and I finally set up my tent. Unfortunately, I was only able to get two hours of sleep before being rudely woken up. So I decided to go for a walk and try to find what was living around the campsite. The first thing I noticed in this dried up riverbed were thousands of these little orange and black insects. I'm not sure what exactly these little insects were because I wasn't able to find anything that looks exactly the same as them online. But I was able to find a similar looking insect with the orange and black markings. Not exactly the same, but sort of close enough that this may be what they are. They're called a milkweed beetle. And I've never seen them before or since. And there were so many here, as you can see, feasting on all these plants. There's also thousands of these little ants which had made their home amongst these flowers. They were obviously getting, getting some food from these flowers and probably also protecting this plant from anything else getting to those flowers because I can't imagine anything wanting to get covered in all of those ants. I had a large number of creeks I wanted to explore, but unfortunately, this was only one of two I was able to see in this area. But this sign gave me hope that this was going to be somewhere with lots of fish. The water was very low, but even in this tiny pool of water, there were lots of little fish swimming about. They appear to be some type of gudgeon, probably empire gudgeons and there's some other species swimming in the mid water as well that I wasn't able to identify. The riverbed was covered with these long strands of what I presume is some type of algae or water plant that I've never seen before. This stony creek was very large and very dry, so I decided to walk up it and see what I could find. And then I came to this large body of shallow water. I thought it was worth having a look at what could survive in this evaporating river. I was very surprised by how many fish I saw. There were at least two species here. The unspeckled hardyhead and the empire gudgeon. We can tell these two apart by several differences. 
The gudgeons like to hang out mostly near the bottom of the riverbed and some of them have these amazing beautiful fins with orange, black and white almost like the same colours as a monarch butterfly. It's typically the males that have these really colourful fins with the females sort of being a dull yellowy brown colour. The hardy heads are the ones swimming much more actively in the mid-water and they have that black stripe going down their body and those big black eyes perfect for spotting danger and food. Behind them are lots of plants, mostly the long thin Vallicinaria, which is a native that's common in Queensland. I headed back downstream and found this really big expanse of water, but it had started to rain. So let's have a look at how this will affect the fish's behavior. They don't seem too bothered by it. We have some more empire gudgeons and hardy heads swimming around here, but there's another type of fish. You may be able to tell by now after seeing my previous videos that this is a rainbow fish, but although closely related to the crimson spotted rainbow, which we've seen on many occasions before, these are called the Splendida. We will see more of these fish later. There's some cool snails in this pool. Let's see if we can get a closer look at it. I don't know much about snails. There's a lot of creatures I saw on this journey that I've never encountered before and I couldn't find much information about them. So I'm not entirely sure what species of snails these are. Maybe someone else can identify them and try to ignore the water on the lens, which I was not aware of. But as we drove towards the next creek, I noticed this disgusting pool of water by the side of the road and thought it might be worth stopping and having a look in it. It turned out it was absolutely full of native fish. We can see more of the Splendida and the Hardy Heads, but there was an unusual silvery fish down in the left hand corner. I only got a glimpse at this fish, but I think it's probably a bony brim. Which would be awesome because I haven't filmed them before, but as this was all I got to see of that little fish, I can't tell. I can't say for sure what it was. As for these awesome rainbow fish, they can be found from around the Gladstone and 1770 area and they continue all the way up the coastline into North Queensland. Their colour and body shape can vary substantially from each location they are found in. What's unique about this area is some of the creeks can have crimson spotted rainbows in them and also have Splendida which can breed together and make a hybrid of the two species. It's very hard to tell the difference between the hybrids and the non-hybrids of Splendida as they have such variation in their own bodies as is. Just like the crimson rainbows, the males are often larger and more colourful, displaying beautiful blue, green, orange, yellow and red colourations. Most of them have an orangey red spot near their gills behind their eye just like the crimson rainbows do, which makes it all the more confusing to identify the two species. But there are definitely some differences between the two of them. Another amazing species living in this deep pool of a dried up creek is the spangled perch. They are much larger and darker colored fish with those huge eyes, perfect for seeing any potential threats or food. They are omnivorous and will eat just about anything from fish and mollusks 
to crustaceans, algae and insects. It's hard to get a good look at them because they are constantly on the move. When I've seen them in the past, they are usually in a small group of two to four fish, just like we see here, but they can be found in much larger groups, sometimes of several hundred individuals. These fish seem to be doing quite well, despite being confined to such a small area. There's lots of food for them from the algae and insects that find their way into this drying up pool. It's at least five meters deep in the middle, possibly more, but this won't last forever. And for these fish to survive, they are desperately gonna need some rain soon before this pool dries up completely. I hope you enjoyed coming along on this journey. This will be the first part of several exploring this unique area. And until next time, keep it murky.